This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. People surrounding me are waiting for official documentation to get into Thailand. <laughs> Myanmar has the largest of malaria cases in Asia because of economic difference between Myanmar and the neighboring countries. Myanmar people move to the neighboring countries look for employment. During the process, they bring malaria infection to the neighboring countries. The people and the government of neighboring countries such as Thailand and China are very concerned with this problem. Part of my research at UCI, together with collaborators from Thailand, China, and Myanmar, are studying malaria control in the border regions. Malaria is a mosquito-borne infectious disease. It begins with a bite from an infected female mosquito, which injects the parasites into the blood. Malaria can cause serious infections, leading to severe malaria and even death. When did she come to the hospital? Uh, she came since two days ago. Oh, two days ago. Uh, okay. the, first, uh, the first visit, she had high fever mm -hmm. and had a convulsion yeah, okay. uh, from fever. So mm -hmm. we uh, blood test and find that she malaria. Yeah. Once a person is infected with malaria, they can die within two to three weeks if untreated. Malaria is a major public health problem here, particularly drug-resistant malaria and uh, counterfeit drug, uh, which has been prevalent in this region. Our project involved the local health workers, hospital workers, and uh, the Ministry of Health from these three countries and the academic researchers from US and from the universities in these three countries. Behind me, people cross the river, the border between Thailand and Burma all the time. They cross the border for family reunion and for employment. Our project is funded by the National Institute of Health as a part of the International Center of Excellence in Malaria Research. Our objective is to contain the malaria outbreaks in the region. One of the most valuable things that we are experiencing is by observing how Burmese would travel such a long distance and going through all these difficulties to come over here to Thailand and seek medical treatment. And I think using a traditional approach to provide the diagnostic that they need to diagnose malaria probably would not fit the local context. Early diagnostic is key to treating these patients and preventing death and actually getting better a lot faster. I believe that's essential in, in being able to provide health care without the infrastructure of a developed nation. The farmers survive on the food they grow, but they don't have funds to buy medicine, and some don't have funds to travel to a hospital. Many die from malaria in their villages before they make it to the hospital. 
exercise. This is why we conduct community-based malaria surveillance and treatment. Today we went to different patients and saw first-hand experiences of testing, drawing blood, and it was really interesting to see the entire process. It's really interesting to see firsthand in the field doing this study how malaria is spread, how it's diagnosed in this society where people come in, get diagnosed, get treatment, and then it's important for them to follow up. And so seeing that instead of just reading or learning about it, I think experiencing it is a new level of education. Go to work and back back up. When will they come back? I can't get see Just seeing her. Oh, she don't know. Yeah, more left. There was a girl, she was so afraid that as soon as she was done pricking her finger, she ran back inside and was crying. Even after we left, I could still still hear her. <coughs> She's afraid of me. That really moved me in that, you know, these kids don't want to prick their finger. If we can use saliva instead of blood, that would be amazing and those children would not need to be afraid anymore. We're currently working on a project to make a new system of diagnosing malaria with saliva instead of blood, so making it non-invasive. So using saliva as a method of diagnosing could open up an even broader way of getting diagnosis from villagers. ตัวเลยไม่ไม่สบายคนนี้ที่ได้ <coughs> We always intuitively understand that if we provide medical diagnostics, it always would be nice to get the result as fast as possible, as easy to use as possible, and as low cost as possible. But the real reason behind why we want to do that is in the field experience that we're exposing ourselves to, is to understand how in the field, why all those requirements like fast, low cost, accurate diagnosis is such a critical part for administering medicine in a third world country. I think that the extent at which people go to get help can actually be addressed more succinctly. I think if you get more people involved, you'll be able to bridge that six degrees of separation. You know, that can be addressed more readily by having a global network of caregivers that can propagate engineering solutions and healthcare solutions. Another important object of our project is to develop diagnostic kit for counterfeit drugs that can be used by local community. 
and to develop the diagnostic kit for artemisinin resistant malaria parasites so we can administer malaria drug properly. One of my motivations in, in pursuing engineering was to be able to implement engineering solutions on a global scale in order to provide solutions to global health care problems to people that don't have direct access to health care. Both in America and abroad, I think these are situations where engineering can greatly benefit the access for these individuals. Leadership is something that we all can acquire. It's a skill and not a gene. And one way to develop leadership is over a long period of time by actually experiencing it and trying different ways to influence other people. There's no better way to do that other than bringing students to different scenarios, different situations, where it really put their personal character to the test. To actually forget about yourself and give yourself to others. When we're young, we say, oh, I want to change the world and make a difference. And sometimes we're not given the opportunity to do that. So we go to high school, we go to college, but we never really go out there and travel and see the world and see what difference there is to make. The solutions reached from here may have important implications around the world.